Hey everybody, Jason Moran here with Cardium, and today we're going to be talking about cardiac cough. Now, cardiac cough is kind of an odd nomenclature that we just kind of use as a slang term in the medical industry, uh, but it refers to a cough that is difficult to clear because of pulmonary edema. Now, these are all just fancy words. We're going to go into them here in just a little bit, and we're going to move to the whiteboard for that here shortly. Uh, the reason we call it a cardiac cough, though, is although the problem exists in the lungs, there's some, some fluid building up inside these lungs, it originates uh, due to a cardiac condition, whether that is uh, hypertension, high blood pressure, or congestive heart failure, or some kind of increasing afterload that's backing up the heart and into the lungs. So we're gonna to move to the whiteboard here for the explainer on this. Okay, so here we have our lungs and as you can see we have our trachea, we breathe air in either through our nose or our mouth and it makes its way into the lungs. Now, I'm not gonna get all into the different branches of the airway system, upper and lower respiratory system, uh, but we're just gonna do a little takeaway here of the lungs right into the alveoli. Okay, now we're gonna talk about these little alveoli. These are the smallest portion of the respiratory system. Air has made its way down from the mouth or nose, through the trachea, down along into the bronchi, the smaller bronchioles, down here all the way into the alveoli. And from this tiniest little grape cluster here, this is where carbon dioxide and oxygen make their exchange, okay? so. We breathe in oxygen along with several other elements as well, but primarily what we're looking for here is the oxygen, and then we exhale carbon dioxide, and that diffusion process happens here in the alveoli. Okay, now let's take a look at a cutaway of the alveoli. So oxygen flows in through the alveoli, and it now has made its way in. And what it's trying to do is get its way into each one of these little sacs where it can diffuse with the blood supply that we have and then make its way back to the heart. Now, in the cardiac cough, the reason we have issues with it is because of pulmonary edema. And what's happened in pulmonary edema is we've had increased pressure that now starts to collect a little bit of fluid in each one of these. And it doesn't seem like much to start with, but as you see, it starts to really kind of take over quite a bit of space. And each alveoli starts to collect just a little bit. Well, if you're losing a little bit here, and you're losing a little bit here, and you're losing a little bit here, eventually that starts to really add up and now you're getting less diffusion. Remember that oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange? And so this starts making it harder for you to get oxygen saturation throughout the rest of your blood supply, which makes you feel weaker and more tired. This is very, very common in congestive heart failure because we are always having problems with additional fluid, and that's why we take the diuretics and the blood pressure medications to prevent this from happening. But as this continues, the more it develops, then the more you start having issues with cough. Now in the cough, it's the body's natural reflex to try to get rid of whatever irritant is in the lungs. You know, in the, the lungs we have these tiny, tiny, tiny little cilia, and they sit up in the airways, and they're here inside of the alveoli as well. And their job is to move anything that's in the way that's irritating the lungs out. That's their whole job, is to just sweep the lungs clean. Well now if you have fluid building up inside of there, they're constantly trying to move fluid out. Unfortunately, fluid is not like mucus and secretions where it can move it and kind of push it along. Fluid is just gonna keep staying right where it is. And although those cilia are doing their best and they're trying to force you to cough and they're trying to move it, it's just gonna keep sitting right there. So that's why you'll have this dry, hacking cough. And when we listen to your lungs, we can hear what's called crackles. And what crackles are is as air moves in and it 
moves around through that fluid. It's just like blowing bubbles through a straw into your, your soda. It's that same effect going on. You're not moving any fluid out of the way and you're not able to get good carbon dioxide and oxygen exchange. You're not getting good diffusion into your blood supply. So you can see that with that excess fluid building up in there, it causes quite a few issues for you. And the biggest problem that you're gonna end up having is this just constant fatigue and shortness of breath. It may not necessarily feel like you can't catch your breath, uh, say if you had some kind of an obstruction in your airway or if you had uh, uh, ran and worked out really hard and you're trying to catch your breath like that. It may not quite feel like that, but it can definitely feel like you just can't get enough air in, okay? So what do we do about it? Well, the main thing, the first thing we do is we're very compliant with our medications. Consistency is the key here. If you are on a diuretic, please, please, please make sure you're taking your medication as it's prescribed and preferably at the same time every day. Your body will adapt best when it has consistency, all right? The other one is fluid restrictions. I know fluid restrictions can be difficult or constantly thirsty. It's hard to measure how much you're drinking, but it is imperative. As we have fluid retention, that retention increases afterload. Afterload increases that pressure in the heart, which increases in backing uh, fluid up, which causes increasing swelling, which causes increasing pulmonary edema, and it just continues on and on and on. The bad part about it is, is that you probably won't even detect that these things are happening initially unless you're incredibly diligent about checking your weight, blood pressure, and pulse on a regular basis, okay? Uh, these small little signs uh, don't necessarily turn into symptoms. And by that, I mean you can gain two pounds in 24 hours of extra fluid without feeling it at all. Two pounds turns to four pounds, four pounds turns to eight pounds, and then you start noticing that you're having a little bit of shortness of breath and a little bit of swelling in your feet, and by that point, you're already into the late stages of it, okay? All right, I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions, always reach out to us, send them in, I love answering these for you. And in the meantime, y'all take care of each other.